Okay, in our video today, we are going to learn about how to graph secant and cosecant graphs. Now, when we work on these graphs, we are going to first start with our corresponding cosine or sine graph. You're essentially going to do all the same pre-planning where you find the period and the scale and the amplitude and the phase shift and the vertical shift. You're going to do all of those same things. But when you graph those graphs, you want to graph them with a dotted line. And then the two new features that we will be graphing First of all, we are going to graph a vertical asymptote, and the vertical asymptote will be located anywhere that the sine or cosine graph has an x-intercept. And if you think about this, that's because where my sine function is um, equaling zero, its reciprocal graph, cosecant, is going to be undefined. So basically, anywhere that the sine or cosine graph would have had a zero value, the secant or cosecant graph will be an undefined value, and where we are undefined, we will have a vertical asymptote. Recall that when we write asymptotes, we use the equation x equals or y equals, depending on if it's horizontal or vertical. And for vertical asymptotes, we will write x equals, and then we will write the angle that is not allowed. Once we have those um, asymptote marks, we will then graph the mirror image. And the mirror image is going to end up um, basically taking off from what used to be the max or min points. And then lastly, we will talk about domain and range, and this we will go over more fully in class. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at those graphs. If you'll see what I have right here, this is my basic graph for sine and cosine. So on the left, you will see this is my dotted graph is y equals sine of x, and on the right, the dotted graph is y equals cosine x. And those graphs are the basic functions with no shifts. Now, when I graph a basic cosecant or secant graph, I want to identify where those previous zero values are. And those previous zero values are now going to become vertical asymptotes. So we will put vertical dotted lines. And that is the same for both the secant and cosecant graph. So as you can see, they have that in common. And then what we are going to do to actually draw in the graph, the previous area where we used to have a max or a min point, so these guys right here, this is where our graph is going to take off from. And we are going to draw what look like little parabolas that are stuck in between those asymptotes. So what you see on this graph here, the part that is in green, a little bit thicker lines, that is the actual graph for secant and cosecant. Okay, let's go ahead and actually try one of these. So if I look at my graph here, what I want to do is I want to first figure out all of my pre-planning information. So based on this graph, I see secant, which means I'm going to start with a cosine graph. I can tell that my um, vertical shift is going to be down 2, that my phase shift is going to be pi thirds to the right, to get the period, I'm going to do 2 pi divided by a half, which will give me 4 pi, which means that my scaling will be a fourth of that, or every pi units. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, oh, and then the amplitude will just be 1 because there is no number in front of my secant. So when I make my graph, I'm going to have my down 2. This is going to be my starting vertical point, and then since the amplitude is 1, my graph is going to go up 1 and down 1 from there. I am starting pi thirds to the right, so my first x-axis value will be at pi thirds. And since my scale is pi, I'm going to add 3 pi thirds to get each consecutive tick mark. So the next tick mark will be at 4 pi thirds, then 7 pi thirds, 10 pi thirds, and lastly, 13 pi thirds. So now from here I want to sketch out what would be my cosine graph. Positive A value, cosine graph would start up high at the maximum, and then go 0, down, 0, and then back up high. And so if you want to sketch in the curve lightly, it would look like this. Then I want to go ahead and draw in my vertical asymptotes, and those vertical asymptotes will occur where I had a previous zero value on my graph. And we are going to ask you to find the vertical asymptotes, so why don't we write those down now. I'm going to say x equals 4 pi thirds, 
and x equals 10 pi thirds. Now those aren't the only vertical asymptotes, those just happen to be the asymptotes that are visible in the first period of the graph. And then when I actually draw my graph, I'm going to draw the graph taking off from those previous max or min points. And that's all there is to it. We might ask you to find the domain and range as well. For this graph, the range is basically going to be everything that the cosine range wouldn't be. So if this problem were cosine, the range would be negative 3 to negative 1. And since my secant graph basically goes in the opposite direction, this range is going to be negative infinity to negative 3 union negative 1 to infinity. Now the domain is something that we will talk about in class. All right, I want you to go ahead and try the next example on your own. Unpause the video when you are done and see if you did the graph correctly. Okay, what we can see here is some of the pre-planning. We found our vertical shift, our phase shift, the period, the scale. Um, since this graph starts pi, 5 pi 6 to the left and the scale is pi halves, we need to add 3 6 each time. So then that would give us negative 5 6, negative 2 6, 1 6, 4 6, and 7 6. And that's how we go ahead and scale our x-axis. Then when we go to do our graph, the sine curve starts on the zero line, which is at 4. And because it's negative 3, we need to go ahead and flip that graph. So everything that we see here is what we mastered um, before the quiz on drawing our sine and cosine graphs. Now it's time to go ahead and do the asymptotes. So those are going to be at negative 5 pi 6, pi 6, and 7 pi 6. So we can say that those vertical asymptotes occur at x equals negative 5 pi 6, pi 6, and 7 pi 6. Again, those are not the only asymptotes, those are just the ones that are visible in this one period of the graph. And then when I go to sketch in my curve, I start from the previous max or mins, and I draw in the little parabola looking shapes. We will talk about domain in class, however we can address the range, and the range for this one is going to be everything from negative infinity to 1, combined with everything from 7 up to infinity. Alright, that's it for today. The next part of the video will address tangent and cotangent, which we will learn tomorrow. Okay, now when we look at our tangent and cotangent graphs, these ones are going to be a little bit different from the other four that we've already learned. First of all, the default period length for a tangent and cotangent graph is going to be pi instead of 2 pi. So that means that when we find the length of the period, we do pi divided by b for both tangent and cotangent. When we go to find our vertical asymptotes, those vertical asymptotes are going to be the first and last tick marks of the interval, okay? So we're going to have a total of five points, and the first and last point will be vertical as asymptotes. For both tangent and cotangent, we do not talk about these graphs having an amplitude. And that is also true for secant and cosecant. Amplitude is the height of the graph, and since these graphs are going to stretch up into infinity, they don't have a measurable height, so we say that they have no amplitude. They do have an A value, but A um, is what helps us find the amplitude. And in this case, case, tangent and cotangent graphs do not have amplitude. Now we are going to have our three basic points which we will plot for a tangent graph. The first point is going to be y values of negative a, 0, and a. And for my cotangent graph, the y values are going to be a, 0, negative a. So these graphs essentially look like flipped versions of each other. The domain is going to be all x values except the vertical asymptote values. And that's true for both tangent and cotangent. And the range is going to be everything because these graphs go on for infinity. Okay, so for both tangent and cotangent, our domain is going to be all x values except the vertical asymptote values, and again, we will address that more in class. All right, so what do the basic graphs look like? For my tangent graph, the basic graph is going to look like this. Does 
since the period is pi, tangent is unique in that it is centered around the origin. So my basic tangent graph is going to have this information. We will have vertical asymptotes at negative pi hats and pi hats. And those key points are going to be at negative a, 0, and a. So if my a value is 1, if we're looking at our default tangent graph, y equals a tangent of x, then my first point would be at negative 1, then 0, then positive 1, and then we draw a little squiggle through these points. It is not a line, okay? It kind of almost looks like those cubic graphs we drew back in Algebra 2. Now when I go to do my cotangent graph, the cotangent graph also has a period of pi. However, for cotangent, that graph starts at the origin just like all of our other graphs did. So similarly to tangent, we begin and end with a vertical asymptote. And then now the pattern for my points is a, 0, and negative a. So my first point will be here, then here, and then here. And again, I draw a little squiggle through my graph. All right, let's go ahead and practice doing some tangent graphs. All right, so when I see my tangent graph, this is my b value. So I know that the period is going to be pi divided by 1 half, or 2 pi. I know that my spacing will be a fourth of that, so my spacing will be pi halves. And because we are dealing with tangent, I know that this graph is going to be centered around the y-axis. All right, so I start with all those things in mind. My a value here is just 1, so my y value is going to go from negative 1 to 1. If I take my entire period of 2 pi and break that in half so that I can center it around the y-axis, I'm going to have two points before it and two points after it. And since this spacing here is pi halves, those points, if I basically just count backwards, negative pi halves and negative pi, and if I count forwards, pi halves and positive pi. Then from here, my first and last points give me asymptotes, so I sketch those in. And because it's tangent, my pattern is negative a, 0, positive a, and I sketch in my graph. All right, now when we look at cotangent, we have a different set of information that is given to us here. So let's break down what we have. First of all, there is no multiplier on x. So for this graph, the period is going to be the standard pi. So my scale or my spacing is going to be pi force. I have an a value of 3, which is going to help me scale my y-axis. I have a vertical shift of up 2. So if I look at this graph, it starts at the y-axis. I'm going to move up 2 from my starting point and then I have an a value of 3. So if I go up 3, that gives me 5, down 3, that gives me negative 1. So that's how my y-axis is scaled. And then now I'm going to go ahead and scale my x-axis. My scale is pi force, starting at the origin. So I'll have pi force, pi halves, 3 pi force, and pi. And my first and last point are asymptotes, so I draw those in. And then from here, I want to go ahead and do my pattern. Now my pattern for cotangent is a, 0, negative a. Since my a value is oops, negative 3, then I'm going to plot my point down 3 at the 0 line, and negative of negative 3 would actually be up 3. So my first point would be down here, 0, and up here. So you can see that when we flip a cotangent graph, it looks like a tangent graph. All right, we're going to go ahead and work with these graphs more in class tomorrow. Um, that is it. Thank you.